It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, welcome back. I am cleaning off Star Wars toys tonight. And uh, I've got a really big collection. Even though I'm trying to sell a lot of it, I still have a ton of it. So as I'm cleaning these off to put them on eBay or the store or whatever, um, I realized that most of these toys I have actually restored myself from uh, broken or dirty or just old toys, restore them, bring them back to their original luster so they work. This is a B-Wing fighter, by the way. I'm getting ready to put it on eBay. Um, I restored this on myself. It's not one of my super favorite ones, but it, it had good play value when we were kids. Uh, it was a little delicate, so to find one that's still intact that'll still do this is kind of hard to find. But anyway, it got me thinking. I really enjoyed uh, restoring these toys over the past 10 years and um, kind of got the bug again. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to buy something tonight on eBay and restore it just for old time's sake. Probably resell it when I'm done. I don't know. But let's... That's so what my idea was. Let's start from the beginning, like how it all starts. Uh, sometimes people will give me a toy and say, hey, can you restore this? And I work out a deal and, you know, they pay me and I do it. And that's great. Uh, or sometimes I just want to buy something and fix it. That's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to buy something. Today is January... Da, 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 Thursday, January 12th. And it is about 10 o'clock at night. I haven't gotten drunk yet because don't get don't drink an eBay. You don't want to do that. So let's go on eBay and see what we can come up with. So what it's not on camera is me deciding what I wanted to restore because it kind of matters. And I got to thinking, what is the first thing I ever restored? Sorry. But anyway, this guy, I've had this ever since I was a little kid. And I'm not even lying about that. It's not for sale, so I don't have to BS anybody. But you see the sound still works. I had to restore all this. The wings come out. With These wings aren't broken. I did a video a while back about broken X-Wings. Mine aren't broken, so I didn't have to do that. But I did learn how to do it for other restorations I've done. So I decided I want to have a, another X-Wing. So I brought up eBay and I typed in the search, Kenner Star Wars X-Wing Fighter. And hopefully we can find one that's uh, really nasty. And we can restore it together in this video. All right, we'll set that aside for now. So, yeah, I'm on eBay. I typed in uh, Kenner Star Wars X-Wing Fighter. And uh, uh, it came up with all listings. Uh, I went to buy it now because I don't want to fool around with an auction because I don't want to change my mind. Okay, here's one. That looks vintage. Star Wars Kenner 78 Vintage X-Wing Fighter Incomplete. Kind of what I'm looking for. Let's see what we go. $64.99 now. It's kind of up there. All right, so what I'm going to look for is on this picture, I'm looking for broken wings. Those are hard to fix, but I know how to do it. I am looking for the color. It looks pretty white. It looks pretty white. Yellowing is always a problem with these because uh, of the, the, the plastic. R2-D2 seems intact. There's no windshield. There's no side guns. Uh, let's read the description. Oh, there's other pictures too. Okay, it looks like there's a little yellowing if you look down at the... Uh, where we go? Oh, I lost the picture. Looks like there's a little yellowing right here. If you can see where I'm at. Uh, that might just be dirt. That doesn't bother me though. There's a fuselage. What are we doing on the fuselage? It looks in pretty good, decent shape. I can work with that. Here's a side view. It's nice and white. Okay. $64 is a lot of money to pay for a broken toy, though, in my mind. Here's this part. It's all, that's dirt. That's pretty dirty in there. Dirt doesn't bother me. I can clean the dirt. Here's the serial, or not serial number, the uh, copyright number. Uh, catalog number, patent number. Uh, Lucasfilm LTD, 1978. So it was 1978, not 1979. Uh, overall, it looks not bad. I wonder why the guy doesn't restore it himself. A little yellowing on the front tip there. And the gears there. It really doesn't look too bad. I've noticed all these pictures, though. He has not opened up the wings. So I wonder if the wings are broken. 
But yeah, on all these pictures, they don't have the X-Wings opened up. It's $64.99. And you pretty much sell a reconditioned one for about $64.99. So let's keep looking. Uh, here's one $24.99. Our best offer. Free shipping. I'm going to come back to that one maybe. Here's one $79.99. Looks just as nice as mine. No sense getting that because I want to restore one what I do there's just a fuselage okay here's another one uh, vintage counter action vehicle. 25 bucks see what I got 25 bucks it's dude, it's got a lot of yellowing look at all that dirt that has been loved that toy has been loved I wonder if the wings open doesn't show the wings open so and the thing the, the reason I'm worried about that I'd rather them show that they're broken if the wings aren't open that means they might have tried to super glue it and they stuck together if that happens there's not much I can do to fix it um, I don't know moving along moving along what's this oh this guy has his wings open okay what do we got that looks not bad not too bad it got the wings open Needs a few parts. It needs a canopy. Needs the side guns. It's got the landing gear. It looks like it might need a light bulb too. Hmm. Interesting. Let's look at some more pictures. Uh, this looks like the same person. This one's thirty dollars. Same person. Also, you know, I want to check this guy's feedback. Hundred percent positive feedback with seven thousand five hundred and seventy-eight. So this guy's been around for a while. And I think maybe I bought stuff off him before, or her. But 100% positive feedback, that's good. So what we got here? We got the wings looking good. Those wings are open. Got a cockpit, but don't have the canopy. Got a nose cone. It's faded. This might be something more like what I'm looking for. Got the landing gear. Uh, incomplete broken right right wing is the wing included because I could fix that do 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 um, clink uh, is the right wing there. there's two there and looks like there's two there show me how it's broken show me the broken doesn't say all right, those are open. Ah, those are open and those aren't. Where are we at? These two open, those two don't. I think we might have a winner here. Well, I'll tell you what. I have been looking long enough, and you probably aren't seeing it in the video because I probably edited a bunch of views out because I'm long-winded. It has literally been like 40 minutes that I've been just looking to buy one. So that's too long for a video. So I probably skipped through to this point, and this is the one I decided to get. Uh, ooh, 25 bucks. Well, I don't know if I can afford 25 bucks. All right, I'm going to go for it. We're going to get this guy. It looks in sad shape, like really sad shape. <laughs> they, want, they, they want me to get a protection plan. Yeah, no thanks. I like them French fried potatoes. Mm -hmm. What you didn't see was me clicking on my money information because it's none of your damn business. But so I probably skipped ahead of some weird spot. But as you can see, I ordered it. It'll be here January 19th. That's next Thursday, a week from tonight. And then I'm going to start working on it. And I'll show you guys from start to finish. Like I'm literally doing it from start to finish this time starting here but by ordering it and when I get the piece of junk let's make it beautiful that's what I'm doing so off to the next section <laughs> so as you can see by the video of the mailman it came last night which was Saturday which I wasn't expecting it until next Thursday at least that's what eBay told me Turns out the guy lives real near me. I actually could have gone and pick, picked it up. He lives in Jamestown, Pennsylvania, which is not far from here. But he mailed it to me. Uh, like I said, we bought it Thursday, and here it is Sunday morning now. Uh, we bought it Thursday night. I came home, and I was working, 
yesterday and as you can see about three o'clock the mailman delivered it i was working could do nothing about it so i came home last night a nice little surprise of a box on my porch let's open it and get started okay here we go see he put it in a priority mailbox taped it up pretty good i haven't even looked at this yet i wanted to open it on camera i'm not used to doing unboxing videos so let's see what we can do it's kind of oddly packed looks like he has two boxes together i'm not sure how he did this so let's just start cutting Just for now, just to make sure there's nothing else. Here's a baggie. Nothing in the baggie, just a baggie. I don't think there'll be anything else to it. Oh, hey, thanks for the empty water bottle, dude. Seriously, what the hell? Worst packing ever. All right, but here's what we want. And it's just as dirty as it was in the picture. You can see the wing is broken here. That's the first thing I noticed. You see how dirty it is. Uh, it's got a bulb on it. Got underneath, it's uh, here's what I wanted to see on the underneath here. It's a, I don't know if you can see that. It's General Mills Fun Group, just like my other one, 1978. This thing is filthy though. Look how dirty it is. Look how dirty that is, and it's yellowed, which is cool. Here's a front landing gear. So this is what we're working with. They got a broken wing here. I wonder if R2 works at all. Okay, well, R2 does work. It's holding the other wing open. Maybe. Oh, there it goes. Well, this is what we're gonna start with. Overall, it looks in okay shape. I'm fixing that wing. Will be a challenge but guess what we're gonna do it so let's start taking it apart okay so now we got it out of the box and I have it all sitting here I went through the garbage in the box to make sure there wasn't anything else um, I did know when I bought it it wasn't gonna have the the cannon the the wing cannons I knew it wasn't gonna have a glass canopy um, it said so in the description so I'm not mad about that we'll deal with that later right now we're just gonna give it an overview and see what we what we do have to work with and everything looks pretty good, like I said, other than it being dirty. Um, these stickers, I am going to try to save these stickers. They are the original stickers, as far as I can tell. And in fact, yeah, they're the original stickers. I don't know if we're going to be able to save them, but we're going to try. And uh, like I said, the only other thing that concerns me is fixing this wing. I did do a video before on how to fix these wings. I haven't torn this apart yet. I'm waiting for you guys. So I don't know exactly what we're looking at under there. I can see a little bit of it. It doesn't come out so that piece actually might be intact um, might be able to do a better job than in my other video uh, let's check out the battery compartment because that always concerns me if the battery compartment is all rusty and corroded it's gonna be hard to fix but we can do it all right here we go popping out with the battery compartment and I don't know if you can see this down there where the batteries are if it shows up good it actually looks pretty good I don't see any corrosion and a little dirt but dirt don't hurt we can clean that off there's no corrosion where the batteries live um, the motor we'll be getting to the motor when we tear it apart so that's pretty good I mean I can deal with that that's not gonna be too hard to clean up so let's start tearing it apart shall we Phillips head screwdriver turn it upside down like so I've, I've done dozens of these the first one I'm gonna take off is this nose cap screw very carefully because it's old plastic you got to be very careful with these screws you don't want to crack that plastic because you crack the plastic then you're in for more problems and then I need something to put these in here's a container always have a little container to put your screws and stuff in I know I'm in and out of this camera but I'm sure you don't want to look at me anyway just look over here so put the screw in there and this canopy will come out hopefully nice up oh, there it is got to just tap that bulb down a little bit right I'm trying to show you as I do it this bulb is stuck on this little hole that's okay I'm gonna gently push it down there 
and then the nose cone slides right off. And you can see in this nose cone, it's a lot, a lot of yellowing. That's, uh, that's pretty bad. I haven't decided if we're going to whiten this or not, though. Um, we'll get into that later, but there's that. That's in my little pieces bucket. So the bulb looks okay. I'm going to turn it back upside down. And that's the only screw in the bottom you have to take off. The next screw we're going to take off is right here. And it's obvious it's right there. You can't miss it. We're going to gently, 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 gently undo that. Some people will try and use a power screwdriver. Don't do that. Too powerful, you could crack the plastic. Even if you're just loosening the screws, you, you can go too fast and crack your plastic. So I'm using a magnetized Phillips head screwdriver and I put my screw in there. Also, I want to show you, this is the screw we took out of the uh, the front nose, nose cone. This is the screw I took out of the top. Notice they're different sizes. This is the only one that I, that I remember, the long one. It's the only one I can remember is different than the rest. The rest of them are standard Kenner screws. So when you put it back together, don't lose this long one. Make sure it goes in the front with the nose cone. Yeah, that's that. Okay, so that's that. I got two of the screws out. Now I do have to remove this battery cover. So we're gonna gently pop that up and hopefully it comes right off and doesn't give me any static as my mom would say, which is another word for bullshit. So I'm gonna pop this off. Come on, baby. Very gently, because you're still holding 50-year-old plastic. I made a mistake. I always make mistakes. There's two screws right here. One and two. If I had to keep pulling, I would have broke that plastic. And I'm leaving that in the video to show you guys that nobody's perfect. So I'm gently taking my screws out. Do 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 do. There's doesn't want to come out there it is it fell one screw see it's the same size as the one we just took out of the top and a second one is right here yeah if I'd have kept pulling on this it would have broke cracked something and made it more damaged so I'm going to try to take my time usually when I make these videos I'm there's another screw that's the second screw I'm going to take my time making this video because usually, and there's my traditional text message I get while I'm making a video. I'm going to try and take my time, even though I'm, I'm like as excited as a little kid to do this. I'm going to try to take my time and do this right because I really just miss restoring stuff. I haven't restored anything in, ooh, mid-COVID, I'd say. I did a Death Star for somebody, a Kenner Death Star playset. Okay, so here's the battery cover. I just popped it off. It looks to be in very nice shape. Of course, it needs cleaned. Set that there. And, or without the battery cover, the back, the back cover. The battery cover, we just flip up, up and down. So that looks pretty good. I mean, so far, it's not in too bad a shape. This should be an easy restore, I hope. But, eh, I shouldn't have said that. I could have just jinxed myself. So after that, we're going to remove the fuselage. Comes, uh, we're going to be very careful, once again, for our little light bulb here. Let me lift the fuselage up, make sure this bulb goes through the hole. Just a little bit of wiggling, and it lifts straight up. And as you can see, nothing's connected to it. So we're going to look inside now. And it's funny, because in re restoring things like this, every once in a while, I will find, like, a, a, a gun, a weapon, or, you know, accessory to one of the figures that got stuck down in there, and it's like a little gold mine. Because once I found a Princess Leia blaster from the original Princess Leia uh, action figure. If you sell those on eBay, they're worth like 50 bucks. But I happen to need one for my actual real figures. So, you know, bonus gun. So this guy actually, this piece doesn't look too bad. We're going to work on that. i set that aside here. And the next thing we're going to take off is two more screws right here that are holding the unit on the wing mechanism. So we're going to take these screws out very gently. I cannot stress that enough. And you'll see it's another standard Kenner screw, so it can get mixed with the other ones. Number two is right here. There's four holes there. And when I first d started doing this, I thought, well, it's missing two screws. Nope, this is what Kenner did. And apparently, because back then they had people on the assembly line. They didn't have robots, you know, putting the screws in. There's actual people like you and I doing it. And 
so for some reason Kenner decided only to put two screws in it. So that's that's why there's only two screws. So that's held in now, or that's released now. I lift it up very gently. And I want to check the bottom fuselage out first. And well, no bonus guns today. But as you can see, it's just dirty. Just dirty. We're gonna test that motor. I did a video on how to get these motors running too. I probably should have tested this before I open it, but that's okay. We will be fine. So this looks pretty clean overall. I mean, it needs a good scrubbing for sure. Set this one aside. Right there. Now the wing mechanism. This is what we know we're gonna to have to fix. Oh, it just slid right out, so. Okay, I can see that. All right, we'll set this guy here. These two clips hold R2-D2 on. We're going to squeeze them in very gently, very, very gently. And pop one out, and then the other one just slides. It should slide right out. There it is. Here's my R2-D2 assembly that activates the wings. There's a spring in there, if you can see. And it seems that... I'll take this out very gently. Don't lose that little bitty spring there. You're going to need that. That's going on my parts bin. And an R2-D2 on the bracket... It seems like the spring is in good shape, too. We're lucking out on this one. This one isn't going to be so hard to restore. Aside from whitening it, I could probably get this done today. So that's that. Put that in my parts bin. Now, all these other pieces I'm going to set aside for now because what I really want to look at is these wings. And you can see there's a axle here that's intact. And this wing actually fits right here. If you could see it, all the pieces are there and it's actually a clean break. Now a lot of people would just super glue that. We're not going to because I've proven over and over again super glue doesn't work in the long run. So I'm going to show you my method how to do that real quick. Very quick. I mean it's going to take me a while but I'll, I'll just put a real quick thing. If you want to know how to do this the entire process there's another video on my channel fixing Kenner X-Wings. Fixing Kenner x wing wing assembly it's in there somebody just made a comment on that the other day giving me another suggestion but they didn't watch the whole video and they're telling me to do something I already did so yeah this is what we got for here so I'm gonna set him aside I'm gonna take this axle out and you see all this axle is, is just a piece of metal just a piece of metal but you know what you need it sometimes you see I use these pointers a lot if you see they're almost the same thickness sometimes when I didn't have one of these didn't have the actual axle I would use a piece of this to put it together and it worked just fine okay so then this comes apart like this this wing is the one that's not broken it seems to be dirty of course but it is still in nice shape so we'll set that aside and here's the wing we're gonna fix now what I'm going to do first is I definitely want to clean these up and I want to remove the stickers. So before I worry about fixing it, I want to give it a good cleaning. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to clean all this stuff. And I'm going to answer that text message. <laughs> all right, let's move to the cleaning pro or the sticker process. So to do the stickers, you need a couple things. Zippo lighter fluid or any lighter fluid, the cigarette lighter fluid. I like using this because it won't ruin your stickers. And uh, we're going to take them off this wing first because I want to get this wing started. It's going to take the longest to fix. So I'm just going to spread some lighter fluid on there just like that. I was going to use tweezers to do this, but, you know, my wife stole my tweezers because I have good tweezers. And she has the dollar store one, so she has to take mine. So they're not here. So I really don't like doing it this way, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's what I do. I'm just going to try and get under that sticker. If you can see, I hope. Yeah under that sticker and just I'm not cutting I'm using a uh, I'm gently pulling up on it and you can see that lighter fluid has penetrated the glue and can you see good yeah it is coming up like a dream right now actually I'm just gonna slowly let the lighter fluid do its work and there we go one sticker now it is saturated with lighter fluid so I wouldn't recommend smoking while you're doing this I'm going to set this guy aside. Lighter fluid is great because it'll evaporate. And I don't have a dry piece of paper. My sticker won't be too damaged. And we possibly might be able to put reapply these when we uh, 
reassemble after it's all clean. Now I'm gonna take all these other stickers off the same exact way. I'm not gonna do it on camera, it's gonna take too long. And then we'll be right back. Well, that was tedious. I decided to film the whole thing, but I fast forwarded through you through for you so you could see, you know, how tedious it could be. It took me oh maybe 15 minutes, which is actually quite fast for me. I did mess up two of the stickers that I'm not happy with. This one here, if you can see, I got a little chunk out of it whenever I was pulling it up. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna use this or not. I have other stickers. I think I got to look at my archives, my junk box, so to speak, where I, I keep all these things. And then the other one I messed up was this one, as you can see. I took a little chunk out of that right there where my thumb is, too. But overall, I got them all off. And uh, as you, you probably noticed, I use a lot of lighter fluid on it. You have to be careful with that. I mean, it's flammable. I shouldn't have to tell you that. But other than that, people are like, oh, you're going to damage the plastic or, oh, you're going to damage the sticker. No, if you do it right and you wipe it up afterwards, you should be perfectly fine. Because keep in mind, we are going to scrub all this stuff now. And uh, so that's that. And uh, next step up is we're going to take this to the sink and we are going to scrub the heck out of it and see how clean we can get it. Then we'll decide if we're going to whiten it or not. So I uh, will see you at the sink. The one right here now is uh, uh, warm water. A little on the hot side, not too hot. You don't want to melt your plastic. And I'm using any kind of, uh, this is just a simple soap. Uh, that's a hand soap, actually. A mild detergent is what you want to use. You don't want to use any bleach or any Windex or any chemicals. Uh, Dawn dish soap works perfect, but today I happen to be out of it. And I'm just putting it in there, sudsing it up. I'm using a fine bristled paint brush to get into the cracks and crevices and everything. And I'm just scrubbing it. And then I'm going to rinse it and I'm going to dry it off and we'll be good to go. So I did this with all the pieces. I'm not gonna show you all the pieces. I'm just showing you the one piece that I did, but I did the same for everything except the bottom of the fuselage, which I'm going to explain here in a minute. So moving on. Okay, so I just showed you the one part that I cleaned, but I cleaned all the other parts like that. It took me about a half an hour to get them nice. I used the paintbrush to uh, rub the soap in and uh, it was just a mild hand soap I used. You don't wanna use anything like bleach or Windex or anything like that just a mild hand soap is all you need because you're just trying to get the dirt off of it if you want to whiten it later that's up to you we'll talk about that later but not right now this piece here though I did not submerge in water because it's got electronics now I could take it apart completely and redo it but I have a feeling this motor is gonna work just fine for us I haven't tested it yet because I tore apart if it doesn't I'm gonna show you how to fix it anyway um, so I didn't submerge it some water what I did was I took my rag so saturated it with hot water and a little bit of that soap that I used and I just did this and just kept doing it and doing it and doing it to get all the marks off of it and as you can see it came out pretty good I mean I'm even happy with the color so I just want to show you this is the one piece you don't want to put in water the rest of the stuff can get soaked and that's what I did um, what are we gonna do next we are going to look at the rest of the pieces okay so now as you can see all the pieces are nice and clean um, just the way I did the, the first one um, like I said, it took about a half an hour. I wasn't really counting my minutes. So I am all laid out. And I'm satisfied with all the pieces of the way they came out. And I was thinking now's the time. was like if I'm going to bleach them or not. Well, if you don't really bleach them. The process is called retrobrite. And basically, you need uh, you soak it in peroxide. Put it in a container. Fill the container full of peroxide. Cover them all up. Set it out in the sun for, you know, two, three days. It all depends on where you live. It can be done in one day if you have nice hot weather. It's January right now. Today's January, what is it, the 14th? Or the 15th. Today's the 15th, the Sunday. I'm, I'm not going to do that in January. Plus, I'm pleased with the way they came out. I mean, just using that little bit of mild soap and the, the soft bristle paintbrush that I used to work all the dirt and grime out, it's really surprised me how nice it was underneath. Now, if you can look at mine right here, um, this is my own personal one. I'm going from the beginning of the video. You can see it's actually a little yellower than the one we just cleaned. So I might try to clean this eventually, but uh, just to show you the color difference, just in the one we just got. 
So that's why I'm, I don't think I'm going to do the retro break process. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it as is. And then that brings me to the stickers, which, as I said before, I had tore the yellow one. And uh, one, of the, one of the red tail stickers got a little buggered up. I do have a stash of stickers here that I saved over the years from doing restorations and extra ones that I didn't need. I don't have the yellow one. The only yellow one I do have is one that somebody had put the battle damage stickers on, which can't be removed. So I'm not going to use that. And I do have the red one that I need right here in my little collection. So I think because I can't put all original stickers on it and the fact we're going to fix that wing, I think I might go ahead and make a set of stickers, brand new re re repro stickers, so to speak. And just, just to dress it up a little bit, make it look nicer. That's a personal decision. You can do whatever you want. But I think that's what I'm going to do this time. Because I'm not happy with the stickers I have. And I kind of want to save the good stickers here for whatever I restore one better using all original parts. Because we're not going to use original parts on this. So that's our next step. Um, I'm going to do the wings now. But I'm not going to put it in this video. If you want to see how to do the wings, there's a video further down on my channel. Uh, that'll show you exactly what I'm about to do. So I'm going to fix the wings. We'll be back and then we're going to see what, what we got Okay, so once again, there's all our pieces. I have fixed this wing Like I said, there's a video uh, in my channel showing you how to do this. I didn't want it took me This one was actually harder than I thought it was gonna be but I got it done You can see it's in one piece. It's nice and sturdy now Next thing we're gonna move on to is is this engine going to work in here? I didn't tear this apart like I do sometimes because it wasn't that dirty. I'm hoping that this method I'm going to teach you works. We're going to find out. If it doesn't work, I have other methods to get this thing working. But there's no reason all these terminals are nice and clean. There's no reason that I can see why it won't work. So let's get started on that. Get a little cleaned up our workspace. I need my pointer. It's easier to use a pointer in my fat fingers. So okay, yeah, of course here's a motor and. I haven't tried it yet so we're gonna try that now but as you can see all the terminals down here even these ones here are still nice and golden they're not corroded there's no rust on them uh, the wiring as you trace the wiring up to the to the light bulb it all seems sound so I'm my outlook on this is pretty good so you got to get yourself two AA batteries um, you know these are generic it doesn't matter what brand I use uh, let's see positive goes in this way negative goes in this way now we got to complete that circuit and what I'm going to do to complete the circuit is just grab a piece of metal you can use a quarter um, today I'm just using a, an old blade it's really doesn't matter and I'll run the blade across both batteries this actually completes the cycle and acts like the switch that way you don't have to put it all back together now if I did this right this light should be lit it's not sometimes you got to fiddle with it because these batteries like to move around so what I'll do is I'm pushing down on that and up oh, there and you, I don't know if it's coming up. It's not even on the screen. All right, let's see if I can get that on the screen. Can you see that light's lit? I don't know. Now it's off. Now, no. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sure. You, okay, I seen it blink a couple times. I have to do this where I can see. But I'm holding my metal down on there until that light's on. Now that light's on and it's steady. Motor's not working. I was expecting that. All you're gonna do is just turn. My fat fingers in the way, huh? All right. Let me move this out of the way and show you. When you get the light lit, you're going to take your thumb and you're just going to spin this gear until it starts working. Sometimes it takes a while. I've done it up to 100 times and it finally kicked in. Okay, my light's on. I'm pushing down on my, turn, my connection. Here we go. Okay. I did that for about a minute. I think I probably fast forwarded it through it for you guys. Next step, sewing machine oil. Now you don't want to put a lot of this on there. I've used WD-40 before too, but I think this works better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's move these batteries. I'm going into the top of the motor. Give me my pointer. I'm going into the top of the motor right here. Can you see? Yeah, you can see that on camera right here. And I'm just gonna put a drop of oil there. Just one drop. One drop. Right on that. And then I'm gonna hold it up like this so the oil can go through. Spinning is now, it's not plugged in. And I can already feel the difference in the gear moving. Then I'm also gonna put a drop, if you can see where I'm at, right here on this axle. Put my 
oil away because I have a tendency of spilling stuff. And then we're going to go back to the same routine we were just using. Put the batteries back in. Positives. There's a little positive and negative mark down there. See, positive end touches the positive, negative, vice versa. There's my piece of metal. Put it on top of there. Light my light. My light's lighting good. So we got current. Back to spinning. It started, it tried to. There it goes. Like I said, it takes a while sometimes. It's starting to go. There it is. Light still lit. Getting powerful. I'd say it's fixed. And I'm going to run this for about two minutes just to blow any dirt out of there and let that oil saturate in there so it works better. We have a working motor. One more note about these motors. If you just keep doing this and doing this and you can't get it working but your light's on, reverse the batteries. On some of these, for some reason, if you the batteries are in backwards, the light will still light, but the motor won't work at all because it's not getting the right kind of current apparently. So swap your batteries. But like I said, there's a plus and a minus mark inside there. In this case, it matched up. That's one of my favorite things in restoring stuff like this is finding the moving parts and getting them working after all these years. And I've seen some pretty bad ones. This one was actually good. So now is another fun time. We're going to start putting this baby back together. And I'm going to start with the wings assembly. Let's push all these guys over there. Out of my way. Put our so the first thing we're going to do is put our wings together. Like I said, I put them together here to make sure they would work properly. I'm going to put my axle in here. Just like that. And then when I lift up, these should go and open properly. And they do. They open and close properly. That's what I'm looking for. Next thing to go on is the wing assembly uh, mechanism, I suppose. This goes to the back, so... And... These little axles have to go in this slot. So that that's one slot. And then the blue clips go through the holes. And a little bit of messing around here. Got to be very, very delicate with these because, you know, it's 40-some-year-old 40, 40 plastic. We don't want to break it. The whole point was to fix it, not break it more. Put those down in there where it belongs. That guy's in there. I gotta make sure my axle's in that slot, which it is. This is a little wrong there because of the repair I made. Might have to grind that down. Well, let's see. If I put this in the fuselage and it opens, then we're okay. If it doesn't, then I gotta grind that down some. So it's in there. Will it open? It will not. That means I got to grind that piece I put in there down a little bit more. So I'll do that, and uh, I'm not going to bother seeing that. Just going to do it with the Dremel tool. I'll be right back. Well, that part wasn't too bad. I did it off camera. I had to do some Dremeling on the piece that I put in there. I didn't make the hole big enough. But once I made it big enough and uh, put it back together, you can see those things are working good. Just the way they're supposed to. So, next step, put it on the fuselage. Put it right like there, line the holes up. Like I said, we're not rushing or forcing any of this. This plastic is not forgiving. Testing the landing gear again, it's working. Where are we at? Testing the landing gear again, it is working fine. That will work nicely. Now remember, there was only two screws in this. There were two of the regular size Kenner screws, these ones here that I'm laying out. And we're gonna put these back in where they were. All right, 
I recommend using a magnetic screwdriver. It just makes it so much easier working with these little screws. Now we're putting the screws in, but we are not rushing it. We are taking our time, just gentle. It doesn't have to be tight enough to hold, just snug. Is it tight enough to hold plastic together, not steel or wood? Because this is where people make the biggest mistake. They get in a hurry and they put the screws back in. Some people use an electric screwdriver or a power drill, and that's not what you want to do. Very gentle. You hear cracking noises, that's bad. There, I got that in snug, it's not going anywhere. Testing my wings again, because I'm really worried about them. And they are working just fine. I am very happy about that. Very, very happy. And uh, what's next? Oh, now we can actually put this little guy in. I didn't do anything with this guy. This is just the little switch that holds the wing the wings open you can see how tiny it is that just slides right in here and it just kind of sits there it just sits like that now when we get this top part on you'll see it holds it on so good if I mess with it now it's gonna pop off so we'll put that there and get the top fuselage lined up put it in there like I said, you don't want to force anything. Just let it go in naturally back to the place it used to be where the screw holes are. This red light here, before you click down the front, make sure it goes smoothly through the little hole there. And we are almost good to go on this. Everything's nice and even. There's no open spots that shouldn't be there. Now, to hold this together, I'm going to go ahead and grab our long screw. And I'm going to put the nose cap on first. The nose cap's the only thing I wasn't, I'm not happy with. It stayed yellow, as you can see in that picture. It's, um, I scrubbed it like the rest of it. I believe it's a different type of plastic. Well, it must be if it doesn't match. Now, I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Like I said, I'm not going to bleach this. I keep saying bleach. I'm not going to use a retrobrite on it or peroxide. Uh, maybe in the spring and summer when it warms up, I might pop that off and just do that one piece. So now that's holding together nicely. What do we have left? We've got two, three screws left. Where do you think they go? Well, the one is the very first one we took off. Well, we put that one on, but the very first canner screw we took off was right here in the center. And we're going to put that in ever so gently. Just so it tightens up. No rattling. Well, the rings are rattling, but they're supposed to. We got two screws left. And that's for this guy. Remember, we almost broke it taking it off? This is the last thing I like to put on. And when you put this on, there's two holes there in the bottom, if you can see. They go over these pegs. And you slide it on like this. Little light click. And we'll put our screws here in the back. That's in the way. Just gently tightened. And that's it put back together. No more parts left over. That's a good thing. <laughs> okay, what do we got now? Oh, uh, the battery terminal's here. If you can see right there is a piece of copper there. Uh, normally, I would clean that, but this one didn't need it. I was very surprised about that. Whoever had this took the batteries out and stored it somewhat good, even though they broke the wings. So we're going to put the batteries back in and see if this runs. And like I said, on this one, there's positive and negative telling you where it should be. But I know which way they go in because of the test we did earlier on the motor. If I can get my fingers to work right, I'm getting fatigued, I've been doing this all day. Close my battery cover. There it goes. Can you hear that? I know you can hear it. Love that sound. It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> so we're not done yet. But that's it. Put back together. Restored the engine, which we didn't have to do much to it on this one. 
I did a, I did a video uh, earlier on my channel too about how to restore the Kenner engines uh, long, longer in depth, um, where I actually took one apart and had to rewire the inside. That was tricky, but it's doable. And sometimes if you don't have the parts, you have to do it. So now we look at what we're missing. I am missing a canopy. I am missing the guns. See if I can scrape some up around here. Switch parts. So the next step is to put those cannons and that canopy on. You can see I have can four cannons laying right here and a canopy. And you might notice this canopy looks a little wonky. So do the guns a little bit. I actually made these out of resin. Uh, this canopy is not my best work. I don't sell these. As you can see, they have a few bubbles in them. But for this restoration, it's going to be just fine. Um, these cannons, same thing. It's uh, resin, not 3D printed. I don't use a 3D printer. I'm t either I'm too old or... I don't know. I'd rather handcraft them. So let's put these on and see what this is going to look like. Uh, I didn't even check these tabs when I looked. Usually I check the tabs on the next wing. Oh, this one seems to be fine. This one seems to be fine. Maybe. Yeah, there it goes. And this tab looks fine. And then the canopy. I'm gonna go right in there. Might have to grind a little off the tabs on this canopy, maybe. Possibly. Doesn't look like it wants to fit in just on the first try. Okay, let me hit my dry, dry, trusty Dremel tool and I'll be right back. So I hit up my Dremel tool and cleaned it up a little bit, made it fit a little bit better. Like I said, I made this. I never really got a chance to test fit it. But so we ground it down so it'll fit. Hopefully it'll go in now. Yep, there it goes. That's not too bad. That should just click right in down there. There it goes. And front landing gear down. There's our X ring. That's about the most restoration I'll be doing on it. I'm going to put stickers on it next, and then we are done. But as you can see, gave me an afternoon of fun doing this. Still not done, though. Let me get those stickers on, and then we'll talk. Well, here is my sticker sheet. As you can see, I printed out with an inkjet printer. Um, it's a retouched version. It's been touched up on Photoshop to make it a little easier, supposedly, to cut out. And what I'm going to do is I have a very, very sharp exacto knife. I just put a new blade in it. And um, there are white lines here. We're just going to cut them out. And then we're going to apply them. Use a straight edge like this. Find your lines. If you got a really steady hand, you don't have to use a straight edge, but I want these to look as good as they can. This is sticker paper I'm using, by the way. Um, glossy sticker paper. Uh, there's another way I do it. Sometimes I will glue it with a spray adhesive. But for today, we're using the sticker paper because I had some laying around. And that's the tedious part. So we got them all cut out. We're ready to apply them now. So let's do it. Now, I've told you before, there's two methods you can use to put these stickers on. And this is sticker paper. I'm just going to peel and stick them the way they would be in the box when you first bought it. 
The second way is to print them on a glossy photo paper and use a spray glue like, this is what I like to use, it's uh, 3M Super 77. And just and I, what I do is I would actually spray a little bit of this into the, into the cap and use a paintbrush on the back of it, paint some glue, and then, you know, put my sticker where I want it. The benefit of doing it that way is the glue's not dry, so if you don't put it, like, if you put it crooked like this, you still have time to straighten it out, make it nice, clean up your, your excess glue, and you're good to go. But today we're going to take a chance and use sticker paper. Should be interesting. Also, this sticker I'm using here, there has been some uh, debate on which way it's supposed to face on the toy. Some people say it's supposed to face this way and point up. Some people say it's supposed to face down. Well, going from the box that these came in, it is supposed to face down, pointing forward, which makes sense. So, yeah, just to answer that, it is on the box. So, we're going to pay a peel and stick this sucker on here. Always do a test fit first, which I just did. And very, very tedious. Once again, I prefer to use tweezers when I do this. So I can get it just right. Because sticker paper is not forgiving. Once it sticks, it sticks. And if you go to pull back up, you can crease the image. And it doesn't look so good. I got lucky on this one. And I think that looks pretty good there. So we go on to the next ones. Well, there it is. That's about as good as I can do. Not one of my hardest restorations. I even got it done in one day. But I think the majority of uh, this particular toy was to do was to clean it. It was really dirty. It's got minimal yellow yellowing. That's why I decided I'm not going to bother uh, giving it the peroxide treatment. Um, I decided to put the repro uh, stickers on instead of the originals because, uh, well, I put some repro parts and also with the broken wing, it's fixed in there. This kind of lets if somebody goes to buy it, someone can tell that it's not 100% original. <laughs> Which, in my book, is fine. I mean, I, we, we took an old, broken X-Wing and we made it into something beautiful. This will look gorgeous on someone's shelf, my shelf, for a little bit, and I'll probably end up selling it. But um, I just really had the itch to do a restoration. So, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the one we just did and my real one. That's kind of needs cleaned up. And here, take again. And here we have our final product. Front and center is our re fully restored X-Wing with some repro parts. In the back is my original X-Wing, like I was telling you. And I just happened to notice something on that X-Wing. Apparently, I had put some repro stickers on it to replace the original ones. There goes the text message. So I'm going to take the other stickers that I took off the first one and put them in the place of the repro ones to keep it original. And then on the left-hand side, that is my battle damage X-Wing. I just threw it in there for the picture because I thought it was pretty neat. So I gave our new one a pilot, and he's ready to go. I think he came out pretty good. One of my easier red restorations. Uh, like I said, we didn't whiten it. It would have taken a couple days. But man, she get this knocked out in an afternoon. I really enjoyed myself today. So that's what we got there. Oh, here's my shop dog. Come to visit me. Say hello, shop dog. I'm Miss Gracie. And I sit at Daddy's feet the whole time he's working. <laughs> She's a good girl. Aren't you, Gracie? You're a good girl. Say goodnight, Gracie. Say goodnight, Gracie. Well, that's the end of the video. I'm really happy with what I got to do today. Enjoyed my day off. I haven't restored something that I like in a while. I've done some other things for other people. you know, And that's fun, but nothing's better than restoring something I really enjoy and really like so that was my uh, Kenner X-Wing restoration and beginning to end right from the eBay guy all the way to the mailman so I hope you like it hope you learned something um, leave me a comment if you have something to say uh, uh, any opinions uh, there's a lot of different ways to do what I've just done uh, I believe there's no wrong way whatever works the results is what matters so thanks for watching my video guys and uh, next time I restore something I'll make another video this one was long 
Later. It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello.